Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Token Post Interview. I am here joined by Ms. Jade Zhang, the CEO of Mix Marvel, and Mary Ma, the co-founder of Mix Marvel. Welcome. Oh, nice to meet you. Thank you, thank you. So it's always good to start interviews with an introduction, right? So for those who are not familiar with Mix Marvel or Hyper Dragons, the the name might sound a bit unfamiliar. So would you care to introduce yourselves and uh, Mix Marvel as well? Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Jade, founder and CEO of Mix Marvel. Uh, I have been working in the game industry for over 30 years. I started my career in Ubisoft as an engineer. I participated in a lot of AAA games such as Assassin's Creed, Prince of Persia, uh, Tom Clancy branding games. Uh, I, uh, I'm also a serious uh, entrepreneur. Uh, I devote myself uh, into Build up company, creating re real value. Real values, yeah. Yes. Okay. I remember when I was fourteen playing Prince of Persia with my brother. Okay. <laughs> uh, for you, Mary, would you uh, care to introduce yeah. yourself? Yeah, just a short one. I'm a co-founder of Mary Ma, and I am a serious entrepreneur too. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, would you care to introduce us a little bit about Mix mm -hmm. Marvel and the history behind yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, sure. And actually, our team has been working in blockchain industry for over two years and all of the co-members of our team will have over 10 years experience in gaming industry. Mm -hmm. So uh, actually Mix Marvel is a new generation of uh, publishing platform and a high quality content community. Mm -hmm. Now let's dive into the interview. Now yep. Hyper Dragons is now the second most popular game, Ethereum based games in the world. So, including Hyper Dragons, how are the games launched by Mixed Marvel performing so far? Uh, for, for one thing, that uh, Hyper Dragon actually uh, was the number one, uh, the top one on right. the right? Uh, since uh, last August, mm -hmm. we surpassed uh, CryptoKitties. Mm -hmm. And in terms of talking to the other uh, games launched by Mixed Marvel, like Hyper Dragon Go, mm -hmm. uh, it's um, number one on, on ONT, Ontology. Mm -hmm. And we cover like 70 to 80 percent traffic oh, on okay. the main public chain, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the DAU is around like uh, 7,000, right? Seven, uh, 8,000, mm -hmm. 8,000 DAU, daily active user. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, for Apache Dragon, it's like 10,000 DAU on Tron. It's mm -hmm. top one as well. Mm -hmm. So basically, uh, the game developed by, by Mix Marvel, we never fall uh, out of uh, top number five, uh, top five. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, Jay, this is a question for you. You've been, like you said, you've been working in the gaming industry over 30 years, right? So what would you say that catches the user's eye most when it comes to developing games? Is it the uh, quality? Is it the technology? Or is it the, what do you think is most important when it comes to developing games? Yeah. Um... I think uh, uh, Ubisoft told me, uh, teach me that uh, a perfect game is uh, it can combine the best technical and the best uh, user experience. Mm -hmm. so, Technology plus user experience. Yes, okay. yes. Make a perfect game. Mm -hmm. okay. Now diving into some of the products launched by Mix Marvel, Mix uh, Marvel SDK is a software kit that easily integrates token economies to existing centralized games. Now, I'm curious to ask, to what extent does this SDK work? Can anybody just bring the SDK and apply it to their current games, or how does this technology work? Yeah, you are, you are perfectly right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, the SDK actually is a whole set of uh, developing toolkit. Mm -hmm. uh, it's including uh, all the tools you need to develop your game. Mm -hmm. Like uh, the modules, you you can you can simply pull and drag all the modules, okay. and we have already abstracted all the logics into four basic modules: mm -hmm. the item, character, scenario, and rules. Mm -hmm. So it's it's simply used. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the uh, blockchain part, you can simply use our uh, toolkit to get into the exchange, the wallet, and uh, all the main public supporting you you need. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the uh, user side, we have already developed the community and uh, like uh, the uh, the social media part, so you can you can use the toolkit directly. Now, games developed by Marvel SDK would mm -hmm. be uh, 
published on the Mar Mixed Marvel Universe, right? Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. So yes. all the games would share the same community, is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, depending on the type of the game, uh, the point systems can be different. So, for instance, quiz games and FPS games are going to have different pointing mechaniz mechanisms, yeah. which would mean that both games would, uh, once, the, once both games decide to adopt the token economy provided by Marvel SDK, the SDK would have to adopt to different standards and variables. Now, when it comes to the tech behind Marvel SDK, does it account for all the standards? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it's a very good question, actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, well, uh, actually, when we're talking about uh, mixed Marvel SDK, mm -hmm. it's more for the publishing side. Oh, okay. And not for the technical uh, or developing side. Mm -hmm. So, if you want to develop a brand new or a very complex game like uh, uh, LOL, like like this kind of games. Oh yeah, the like League of Legends. Exactly. <laughs> you need to use the professional uh, gaming developing engine mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. So actually, uh, what we do for the platform is <coughs> we develop, we, de we offer uh, the service for the developing and uh, uh, it's, it's more for a publishing side, like just uh, we mentioned for the mm -hmm. uh, connecting with the public chains, mm -hmm. with the connecting with exchanges or wallet and uh, uh, for, the, for the users. So uh, basically we offer three uh, services. The mm -hmm. first is to approaching to the users. Mm -hmm. uh, second one is to active the users. Mm -hmm. And the third one is uh, the payment of the users. Oh, okay. So this is more the service the SDK is offering. Mm -hmm. Not the developing side. Not the developing mm -hmm. side, more for the service and publishing side. Mm -hmm. So besides that, we also offer a whole set of uh, uh, the how to say that a, a whole service mm -hmm. for publishing. Mm -hmm. So like uh, if you are newly in the uh, uh, blockchain gaming, it's quite different from the traditional game actually. Like you say, the point mechanism is totally different. So mm -hmm. we will offer our service to teach them how to build up, how to design a correct or proper uh, token economy in the blockchain game. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a service. Uh, the right, company right. is also offering. It's like the traditional game industry. We got mm -hmm. publishing company, and mm -hmm. they will help you to upgrade your product and help you to get more channels to the to the users. I never should have asked that question. That was so difficult for me to understand. Now, oh, sorry. <laughs> now, according to the website, there are currently three games powered by Marvel SDK. Yes. So, yes. how is the current status of, of adoption? Is it complete? And if so, how is the user feedback? Um, mm -hmm when it comes to DAUs or uh, changes, uh, user activities, are mm -hmm. there any changes or improvements mm -hmm. by the fact that they have decided to adopt Marvel SDK? Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, uh, it's a very good question. Well, <laughs> actually, uh, why, why the SDK can... Uh, the influence of um, Mixed Marvel SDK uh, is not the most important part for, uh, for the user's experience, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what do we do to improve the DAU and to Strong, strengthen user experience is uh, we lower the friction when user get into our game, mm -hmm. and like Hyper Dragon, uh, Hyper Snake, for example, mm -hmm. we newly in, launched it. Uh, user do not have to install any wallets or instruments, uh, mm -hmm. infrastructures when they newly enter to the game, mm -hmm. so they can experience and the data and the digital assets will be recorded on the our layer two solution first. Mm -hmm. And when they want to withdraw or exchange the token, that is the time they need to install the wallet. Mm -hmm. So it's a smoother user experience. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is the first thing. And the second thing is uh, actually the DAU, uh, why people will love the game, is because uh, the design of token economy mm -hmm. and how we operate the game. For example, we, uh, f when facing different group of people, we will uh, select a different play gameplay for them. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, for Neo uh, community, like they are a lot of core, hardcore players, mm -hmm. and we will choose uh, the uh, SPF game for them, mm -hmm. first person sh shooting game for them. Mm -hmm. And for example, for like Ant, and they are more blockchain users, so we right. will choose the trade or uh, trade uh, blockchain game like Hyper Dragon Go for them. Right, right, so right. that they can race and they can battle their uh, dragons and they can <laughs> they can repopulate like 
that they are get their, so their different drivers. strategy for different communities. Exactly. Right. 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 Exactly. So you mentioned an interesting part of Mar Mix Marvel, which is smooth and seamless transaction ex user experience. Now, all this is done due, owing to the contribution made by Rocket Protocol. Mm -hmm. So we, this is a protocol allowing smooth and low cost migration as well as reduced TPS. Mm -hmm. An interesting concept that is. So. But TPS is something that all blockchain projects currently out in the market are suffering from, especially when it comes to Ethereum blockchain. Yeah. Now, how is the TPS problem solved? Or how is this smooth user experience held using Rocket uh, Protocol? And how do you account for all the microtransactions that take into place within your entire gaming economy? Mm -hmm. So uh, in terms of how to solve the problem, so actually, we uh, divide the pop public chain, uh, the blockchain into two layers. Mm -hmm. The bottom one <clears throat> is the public chain. Mm -hmm. So they are the container of asset, digital assets, mm -hmm. and uh, all the all the rules and uh, the uh, outcomes. Mm -hmm. it is, it, it's more transparent, and uh, they they have their own consensus. Mm -hmm. So this is the bottom line. And the second one is our layer two solution. So this is more for uh, for the efficiency. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but still, it's transparent, and we have our validator. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So the layer two would take care of all the transactions, which would be passed down to layer one, where it would control the assets. Did I get that right? Okay. So actually, we use these two layers to service two different kind of people. Mm -hmm. uh, so in terms of layer two, it's more facing the developers. Right. So uh, they 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 will have the logic, the logic, and the rules on the layer two first, mm -hmm. and then as you say, we put the uh, result and the digital uh, digital assets to the layer, layer one. Mm -hmm. And for the users, actually, they do not need to get into the layer two, layer one first. They can experience the game on the layer two solution first. Mm -hmm. So like like just uh, uh, just to take take the example like hyper hyper snake. Mm -hmm. So people will have a, a random account created by the layer two first, and mm -hmm. they will hold their digital assets and outcomes on the layer two. Mm -hmm. And if they want to get uh, to get get into become a blockchain user, mm -hmm. that is time they get to layer one. Oh, okay. So actually, we are using this uh, two layers to cooperate with each other to solve the problem, which is. Uh, the triangle problem in blockchain, which is yeah, safe, scalability. efficiency, yes, scalability. Yes, right, right. yes. So actually, um, th this is the this is the uh, way we solve the problem for especially game industry. Mm -hmm. Our layer two solution is um, is uh, um, uh, exclu exclusive mm -hmm. solution for game industry. It's not for the or the general industry. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, it, it's more for gaming. Now, I caught an interesting statement from Mix Marvel, one of Mix Marvel's co-founders, now stating how Mix Marvel changes the traditional gaming industry, where it has a customer to service provider relationship mm -hmm. into a stakeholder to platform provider relationship. Now, what would this mean? Mm -hmm. anyway, I would say again, it's a very good question. So <laughs> it, it's more related to our token economy of mm -hmm. the whole platform, actually. Right, right, right. Yeah, so yeah, you, you can see that it's a platform, but also it's a, it's a game here. Mm -hmm. So uh, our mix is, is a representative of the whole uh, graph, whole um, value of the whole platform. Mm -hmm. So this is the first thing. And if you are the holder of our mix, actually you will sh you will share all the uh, the growth and all the profit with the platform. Right. It's the first thing. Mm -hmm. And the second thing is we will use our profit to to go back to to buy back. Mm -hmm. All the tokens, so the token will definitely be pre appreciated in the future, continuously. Mm -hmm. It's the second one, and the third one is, um, actually, we are serving uh, four different uh, characters, four parties in the whole right. platform, which are developers, mm -hmm. and content producers, users, and uh, mm -hmm. they are going to be second layer two validators. Right. So um, if you do things in in any kind of good things that in these four sectors, you will be rewarded with mix. Mm -hmm. So actually you are uh, the investor and also one of the owners of the platform. And a contributor, right? Exactly, mm -hmm. contributor. So it's more like uh, if, you, if you say in the traditional uh, industry, it's like several, several big in, uh, gaming companies 
as an alliance, they are giving back profit. They are sharing profit with all the users, all the contributors in the whole econ right. ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the gaming market is huge. However, the public is yet to catch the benefit or the advantages of blockchain-based games, which is profit, like you mentioned. Now, what do you think is left for the blockchain gaming industry to do when it comes to bringing the mass public into their ecosystem? Yeah, so uh, how we attract the mass to, into our blockchain world mm -hmm. is because we actually we have two kinds of characters in, the, uh, in, in all the audience we are facing. Mm -hmm. One is investor and mm -hmm. one is the consumers. Right. So actually the, the blockchain world is, blockchain game is quite different from the traditional games. Mm -hmm. You can not only play game, but also you will be rewarded. Well, uh, actually, I, I want to mention that firstly, the game, the blockchain game, you you should be playful. Right. Yeah. Uh, game should be fun, right? Yes, yes, game should be fun, and yes. ex user experience cannot be worse than the traditional game. <laughs> of, course, of course. Yeah, it, it's it's a very important condition. Mm -hmm. So under this condition, we, we can give you an example, uh, like Hypersnake, we we just uh, debuted. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you firstly enter uh, our Hypersnake you will be able to launch in two different types. One is a casual mode. Mm -hmm. So this time you can just visit as a guest mm -hmm. and the layer two will create a random account for you first. And you can go into our battlefield and to experience the game. Mm -hmm. So once you, you eat the token, so the, the record will be recorded to the layer two. Mm -hmm. And like, like you are experiencing the Tron field, uh, like well, I have eaten, eaten like 50 trunks, mm -hmm. the, the, the row code will, will be on the layer two. Mm -hmm. and, this, and now, if I want to withdraw the tron, I can install the wallet. Okay. This is a casual mode. It's for lowering the friction when a mass get into the blockchain world. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, this is how we attract the users to be in our game. Mm -hmm. And the second one is we have an investor field. It's like um, a, a table in a big casino. Mm -hmm. You can own your old table here and you can invite the other players like mm -hmm. my friends. It, because it's an H5 website game, so I can send the link directly like through Facebook mm -hmm. or through Kakao, this, this kind of I am. Mm -hmm. And I invite my friends here, I can set the rules, I can define how much the champion gonna win and how much the other people gonna share. Mm -hmm. And so, so this time you can see that mm -hmm. I am the owner and I am also the investor mm -hmm. because I am setting the rules. Right, right, right. And, and uh, during, this, during this process, the platform will get some of the profit out. Mm -hmm. And it's like 5%. Per, uh, like, like 5%. Mm -hmm. And we will withdraw all this money into the casual mode, which mm -hmm. is for mass adoption. Right, right, right. So it's more for marketing fee, actually. Mm -hmm. So we, we have uh, accounted, actually, if you uh, operated like 150 rounds in your own room, you will earn like 10,000 US dollars. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's pretty, 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 pretty a lot. Pretty a lot, isn't it? <laughs> yes, pretty a lot. Yeah, so, so uh, this is the way how we attract the mass. Mm -hmm. And in the same time, we instu inst uh, stimulate the investors to get more involved mm -hmm. to, to, our, to our game. So difference in roles, as well as seamless user experience, yes. and the, the, the profit or the incentives, incentives, monetary incentives. Exactly. Right, right. Now, Korea is one of the largest gaming markets in the world. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I have to ask you, do you have any specific plans for Korea when it comes to marketing or expanding your business to here in Korea? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, we raise Korean market uh, quite a lot. Mm -hmm. And one of our, one of our co-founder, he used to work in a, a Korean company, which is T3. Okay. Yeah, he used to work here. So yeah, uh, he's quite familiar with Korean gaming industry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Korea has the uh, best quality of developer and the most active user mm -hmm. in the world. Yeah. So Korea is the, I think it's the most important, mm -hmm. uh, you're right, Korea is the most important uh, country in the gaming industry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also will have an uh, event. Uh, yeah. Yes. Um, uh, maybe you can. Yeah. yeah, yeah we are the, going to, actually we have already sponsored uh, 
and the 100th uh, ceremony of the fund of the prof uh, provisional government. Oh, you're right. It was um, just a week ago, right? Yes, mm -hmm. uh, 11th yes. April. And mm -hmm. we are going to have a big launch party on 24th night. Mm -hmm. And we we big welcome all the people who are interested in Mixed Marvel. And <laughs> well, we would like to share more information about our strategy mm -hmm. and to launch the new game we can experience at, 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 a, uh, at, at a launch party, we will play the game together. <laughs> so I'm, I'm quite sure that you will have fun there. Thank you so much for the comment. Thank, thank you. you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. That was Ms. Jade Zhang, the CEO of Mixed Marble, and Mary Ma, the co-founder of Mixed Marble. Thanks for watching.